Joe, you can start. The attendees are connecting. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us in today's webinar, Exploring ISAP's Online Learning Hub that we have put together for all our regional training providers in general and those in Asia and the Pacific in particular. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Jo Chung from the Colombo Plan Drug Advisory Program. For those of you whom I have not had the opportunity to meet and work with since I came on board in 2014, I manage and coordinate prevention-related initiatives with our implementing partners. I will be your moderator for this webinar. Before we get started, allow me to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. First, as part of our Getting to Know You session, please type into the chat pane of the control panel your full name, the organization you are affiliated to, and your country of residence. Secondly, you will have the opportunity to submit text questions to any of our presenters by typing your questions into the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel. Feel free to send in your questions at any time during the presentations, and we will collect these, and I will bring them up during the Q&A session at the end of the presentations. To start off, kindly be informed that due to a last minute conflict with another of engagement, Dr. Natalie Panaboke is unable to deliver her welcome address today. She sends her warm regards and has requested that I stand in for her. Here's my welcome address. Thank you to each and every one of you for being here with us today. We are indeed very pleased to be able to welcome those of you who have been with us for several years now, as well as those of you who are new to our training providers community. For the record, in 2016, Colombo Plan initiated the Education Providers Initiative that primarily aimed to disseminate training on our universal curricula, in addition to enhancing the professional development of those seeking to become certified professionals in the drug demand reduction field and those who want to maintain the certification. As many of you are already aware, in June 2020, we updated the system where all the existing education providers became collectively known as training providers and categorized based on organization type. One, training organizations. Two, colleges and universities. Three, organizations working in the DDR field that conduct training events or civil society. And four, government agencies. In compliance with this update, all existing and new colleges and universities now come under the purview of ICU DDR, while designated regional coordinators from Colombo Plan and, R and NRC oversee all the other training provider organizations. The contact information of these regional coordinators will be posted on the chat shortly for your easy reference. Indeed, we are proud to inform you that to date, we have a total of 83 training providers worldwide registered with us. That is 23, sorry, 29 in Asia and the Pacific, 48 in Africa, five in the US and one in Latin America. We are very confident these numbers will increase in the coming weeks, months and years. Interestingly, if you have been following our recent developments within the drug advisory program, you would probably know about our latest addition to the universal curricula. 
For those of you who are not aware, we already have the online instructor-led and self-led courses for some of the prevention and treatment training curricula. Several of these courses are already available and ready to accept training requests, with others soon to follow. Do visit https colon double dash www.isop.net slash training slash online learning hub to avail of the latest scheduled courses. To support and facilitate your future training plans for online courses on the Universal Curricula, in collaboration with ISAP and CCAG, we have put together today's webinar, Exploring ISAP's Online Learning Hub, that aims to introduce you to and familiarize you with what the hub has to offer. With this, I wish you a successful webinar experience. To continue wearing the hat of the moderator, in the next 40 minutes, our presenters will take you on a quick tour of ISAP's online learning hub, where our instructor-led and self-led online courses are hosted, followed by a 20-minute Q&A session. Let me now introduce you to our esteemed panel of presenters. We are joined by Jack Tonkin, Senior Website Developer, International Society of Substance Use Professionals, who is standing in for Joanna Travis Roberts. Welcome, Jack. Good morning. In 2015, Jack spent most of his professional life building websites to help connect and share knowledge between the many talented and passionate people like you working internationally in drug demand reduction. We are very happy to have him join us today to lead our tour of ISAP's online learning hub. Our second presenter is Becky Wong, Director of Global Center for Credentialing and Certification, GCCC. Welcome, Becky. A leader in the substance use disorders field, she has been for over 40 years experience working in the addiction field, focusing on public policy, training and best practices in prevention, treatment and recovery support services at the local, state and national level. With her recent involvement in the development of the UTC to a self-led version, she will be shedding light on these courses as well as provide us with information on how to apply to take the online credentialing examinations. Proceeding to the next agenda item on online instructor-led courses, we have Joe Rivas, Program Officer, Latin America and Caribbean Training Dissemination, that field office in Chile. As the project lead for the transformation of the in-person universal curricula to an online version, she will show us how to create and register an online course. Finally, Dr. Andreas Hein, evidence-based prevention consultant for CCAT OAS, who oversees the design, implementation, and assessment of remote training adaptations for the UPC practitioners core, school, family, and ME. He will share with us several navigation tools for online courses, as well as some strategies on how to supervise learners registered in these courses. Thank you, Dr. Andres, for being with us today. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to our first presenter, Jack Tonkin, Senior Website Developer, ISAP. Over to you, Jack. Hi. Um so, um, hopefully everyone can see my screen. This is the uh, homepage of the ISAP website and the online learning hub uh, sits within the professional development section. Um, so we, we can navigate there and it's the first item on the section homepage. Um, there is a brief introduction on this page which uh, explains 
handily for us about the kinds of courses that are being piloted. Now, there's there's, there's two kinds of, um, of of courses that we can we can share. We can share courses that are um, open for anyone to um, participate in, or which will advertise on the ISAP websites. Or there are also courses that are closed that are for you know um, registered. participants that are um, that have, have, have signed up in advance or been identified by yourselves um, and those you can share via a um, via a hyperlink so that they can navigate directly to the the course page and register from there um, open courses um, there's 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 two examples there's um, obviously there would be trainer leg courses led by yourself the, the process for registering for those, though, is extremely similar to the um, self-led courses, which um, Becky will talk about later in the presentation. Um, as a as a as a as a, a training provider, if if you wish to to run a course, you have to um, schedule that course um, and ske schedule courses um, excuse me so as a as a training provider in order to re request a course to be scheduled you need to have the correct permissions on the ISAT website as a tr be recognized as a trainer already and you need to log in with your uh, ISAT membership so I'm going to just do that now with my uh, membership which has the correct permissions. So, except it doesn't. Excuse me, very sorry. This is a presentation fail. Excuse me, I'm very sorry. Using my uh, test test account for demonstration, I'm now um, logged in with the co correct permissions as a training provider. And as you can see, what that has done over the standard ISAT member profile has um, added extra options in the left-hand menu here. Uh, one of which shows you the list of all of the courses that have been scheduled. This includes demo courses and. Um, and the uh, self-led courses. Um, cu currently, they are in the order that they have been added to the website. Um, this isn't particularly useful. This is something that we're working on to improve so that there's um, there are filtering options and uh, demo and uh, pilot courses will be retired over time. Um, however, there is a list of all of the courses that are scheduled that um, education providers can see to verify that their courses are online. Um, there is, in in order to uh, request a course, you need to use the train provider course request link, which is in the left hand menu when you're logged in with the correct profile. Uh, from here, you can see the um, all of the information about the, uh, the the cost implications of requesting a course and the um, the steps that you have to go through in order to hold hold the hold the training, and then you can provide for our partners at Healthy Knowledge who actually host the course um, information about the trainer, the coordinator, which course you want to run, which language you want to run it in start and end date, the number of anticipated participants, um, the your organization name, which is the um, name of the train provider that uh, registered with ISAP initially. And uh, you have to confirm that you uh, understand that there are 
uh, cost implications if you don't already have a um, agreement in place with Healthy Knowledge. Um, that's uh, very simple to fill in. This is a little bit more. As you can see, currently live for training, we have the first three courses on the UPC Managers and Supervisors series, the core course from the Practitioner series, and the SOGI course from the UTC Specialized series. Uh, there are um, all of the rest of the UPC courses uh, being, um, all the rest of the UPC Managers and Supervisors series courses are being piloted and so is the WISE uh, course one, I believe, at the moment. So there will be more courses added to this list as, um, as we progress. Um, all of the courses currently available are available in English or Spanish. Um, you can select in advance your start and end dates for your course. number of anticipated participants, um, the name of your organisation as a training provider, and your billing contact. And when you select that, that notifies the um, notifies our partners at Healthy Knowledge who will be in touch with you um, to coordinate setting up your course online. Um, registering for a course is, uh, is, e is even, um, even simpler. So uh, in order to do that, first of all, I'll show you a, the links to the uh, self-led courses, which are in the left-hand menu. These are available to everyone who visits the ISIP website. In order to, um, to enrol in a course, you need to be logged in as an ISIP member. You can see that I'm already enrolled in UTC7, but I could enrol in UTC1 just by uh, clicking on the link and going through. But what I'm going to show you, as I'm already set up on Healthy Knowledge, I'm going to show you with a, another demo user who hasn't been through the process yet. So I'm going to log out and log back in. Spell my email address right. So to connect to a, a a course, I can navigate to a to an open course. I can just navigate there, and I I'm already enrolled. I don't have that. And I can click on enrol, and I'm taken to a page where I can um, set up my password on the Healthy Knowledge site. And that will then take me through where I can log in. Oh, I didn't write down a password I used. Let's use that one. Where I can log in and I can see myself um, or enrolled on the course. Um, the final thing that I want to show you is that for a, um, a scheduled course that is private, the, um, the, uh, the end user has to be shared a link to that course. 
but they are just on the website in exactly the same way. So this is a, a private pilot for the um, for the WISE curriculum, which is upcoming. And uh, when a, when someone visits there as a, um, it's, it's not a, at all accessible from any of the menus, but when someone visits the page as a um, anonymous user in this case, they get a message saying that they to enroll, they need to log in or be a member of ISA. And then when they come back, once they're logged in, they will just get a, a login link exactly the same, an enroll link exactly the same as they would if they were a, um, if they were accessing a public course but the the course isn't 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 available to anyone who just browses the website they have to come to a specific link um apologies for the demo fail halfway through that but um i think that's covered everything Good Monday, everyone. Um, let's see if I can make this work. I am going to stay off camera. I'm in a place with low bandwidth and while sharing my screen, I want all the energy to go toward that. So um, apologies for that. So I flashed my face up there just to remind you <laughs> who I am. Uh, I'm Becky Vaughn, as Joe introduced me, Director of the Global Center for Credentialing and Certification, or we go by GCCC. I'm glad you've tuned in because I love talking about these new self-led online curriculum as well as certification for professionals working in the field. So what exactly is an International Certified Addiction Professional or ICAP? I'm glad you asked. Credentials and certifications mean different things in different countries, but we use the terms interchangeably. A credential or certification is issued by a third party with authoritative recognition and provides proof of an individual's qualification or competence in a given subject. GCCC is the credentialing arm of the drug advisory program of the Colombo Plan. <clears throat> Excuse me. We set minimum standards, provide experience and training verification, along with appropriate exams, so that governments and other employers know they are hiring and utilizing the most qualified professionals. GCCC offers four levels of certification and treatment, each requiring different levels of education, training, and experience. Our prevention credential is in the piloting process. Prevention specialty area endorsements are also being developed with their own set of training and experience requirements, as well as an appropriate exam. Our recovery support credential is in the final updating process. Both of these will be available within the next six months. So let's briefly look at the process. It always seems to start with passionate people, those people wanting to make a difference in the lives of others. Next, we require minimum education levels and training in substance use disorders. While there are many training curriculums that support addiction standards, you as trainers are probably already aware that the universal curricula has been developed by teams of international experts in the fields of prevention, treatment, and recovery support. <clears throat> Excuse me. The UC has traditionally been offered in an in-person setting, as something else many of you know, but it is currently being converted to also be available in a self-led or trainer-led online version, as Jack mentioned. So we're going to see exactly how it works. Jack showed you basically ISIP's online learning hub. So let's look more specifically at the self-led courses. 
And he said, <clears throat> once you have registered, you'll see a message that says you are enrolled on this course and you will simply click on continue on healthyknowledge.org. As he also mentioned, if this is your first time, you'll see instructions on how to set up your account. Either way, you log in and that takes you right to the course. I wanna point out that the availability of technical support, if you have any problems or questions, is highlighted right there as you get to the courses and it tells you exactly what to do. Scrolling down, you'll find the introduction with some very important information. This course is designed to be completed at your convenience according to your own timeline. That is one of the beauties of this course. You can take it as you feel it fits with all of your other responsibilities. For this course, we do ask that you take a pre and post test. Both tests will help you evaluate your retention of the course content, as well as provide us with some valuable uh, data. There are instructions before modules and within modules to help you move through the course. The system will save your position within the course, but each module must be completed before progressing to the next. This next section is particularly important since I'm also talking about credentials and certifications. If you wish to receive continuing education credit for this course, you must complete the course assessment. The course assessment are questions at the end of each module. You must obtain an overall score of 80% to receive the CE credit. If you choose not to take the assessment, that's perfectly fine, but in the end, you will see a completion message, not receive a completion certificate. And then finally, for the very best viewing experiment, experience, we recommend you take the course in Google Chrome. That seems to be uh, the best for the best possible experience. Continue scrolling down to find out how to join ISAP, uh, a UTC1, if, you're, if that's the course you're taking, network, allowing you to communicate with others doing the same course. Then move to click on the pretest. Right below the pretest, you'll see an outline of all the modules in the course you've chosen to take. Please note, you will get a restricted message if you try to skip the pretest. So don't think you can just skip that and go right on into the course. Now you've taken the pretest, you're good to go. Click here, make sure your settings allow for pop-ups. And the first slide will come up of the course. There are more functions up here, including closed captioning, a list of all the slides in the menu, as well as a place to exit at any point. We recommend taking notes just as you would for any other course you might be taking, but you'll also have opportunities during the course to journal as you progress. Turn up your volume, get set, click here to continue. In each course, you'll have an introduction of what to expect. It will list all the learning objectives up front. It will outline how the course is divided so you can see each of the modules. Look for the yellow key icon because understanding those key points will help unlock larger ideas. You'll see the reference book icon when you need to look up a definition. There will be opportunities to check yourself to see if you're understanding the material. The course will also provide case studies with real scenarios to put your knowledge into practice. And as I mentioned, you can build an e-journal to include reflections, notes, and or document your own goals and objectives. 
At the end, it will ask you for a self-assessment on the material with opportunities to return to certain sections for more review, or if you're feeling good, you'll move right on to the end of that course. This online version offers lots of versatility. As I just mentioned, the whole idea of a self-led course is there, it's all set up for you. It could be done as a group project or maybe a, a group of staff at a, a, a treatment center or a prevention program can do it together. It can also be trainer supported or even a hybrid model where some of the courses might be done online before you come together in an in-person setting. It also provides great review material before you take a credentialing or certification exam. So now that we have our candidates trained, the professional process continues with the experience of working directly with clients and patients with substance use disorders. The next step involves actually sitting for the exam, which is designed to assess individual knowledge and skills. Traditionally, people have traveled to a specific location at a specific time to sit for the exam, either in a paper and pencil version or in a computer center. That's not always an option for everyone, especially during a pandemic. So we are now utilizing remote proctoring, allowing individuals to take the exam online at their convenience using a computer with a camera. Passing the exam completes the professional process to obtain an ICAP credential and the cycle continues but it actually never stops. Continuing education keeps professionals up to date on the latest modalities, along with providing services to broaden the clinical experience, allows the professional to be prepared for renewal of the credential every three years without having to take another exam. TCCC has certified just over 1,900 ICAP professionals in 73 countries. So hopefully by now, I've convinced you of the importance of ICAP to the point that you will be our cheerleader among all the people you train. So what's the next step? We want you to understand the process so that you can understand how to explain it to others. We've designed our process to be as user-friendly as possible. All the needed information can be found at our website, globalccc.org, including a how-to video and our customer service portal to apply. It really is as easy as one, two, three. Step one, gather the documents. Document training with certificates and or university transcripts. Document clinical experience with a letter from the supervisor. Complete the application and upload all the supporting documents. And finally, sign and upload the GCCC Code of Ethics. Once approved, step two includes payment for the exam fee. This can also be done through our customer service portal. And finally, step three includes an email that will go out with instructions on scheduling the exam with a live proctor who will watch the test taker remotely. I can't see you, but if you're still here listening, here's how I picture you. True heroes of the community, ensuring that we have a trained workforce. Thank you for what you're doing, and thank you for continuing to be fearless and ready to take on the next new challenge. As we all know, things continue to change and we keep adjusting. Thanks for your time and attention on this. Here's all the ways you can connect with us. Don't hesitate to reach out. As I said, we love talking about certifications and online curriculum. Good morning, good evening, everyone.
Uh, I'm going to show you uh, an overview of what um, an instructor-led course are. And um, due to the COVID, uh, Colombo Plan and OEA CCAD has converted the, all the courses the, of the UC curriculum to an online format. Uh, all instructor-led courses are available in English and Spanish right now. A total of 15 courses have been uploaded in LMS, Moodle, and hosted on Healthy Knowledge website. As Jack mentioned before, uh, the UPC practitioners, UPC managers and supervisors courses, SOGI course and WISE courses have been converted. WISE courses are four in the whole series and one of them is going to be piloted soon. In UPC practitioners, one course has been converted, which is UPC core. And from the UPC managers and supervisors courses, the nine courses of the series have been converted, as well as SOGI course, that is, is just one course. It's not the whole series. Now I'm going to show you a walkthrough from the instructional videos of the courses and some activities. This is the way you are going to see the courses. They, all of them have instructional videos with an instructor giving all the uh, explanation of each of the slides of the courses in order to guide the students into this knowledge, as well as several activities like this one to check the knowledge. So every time between the videos you are going to find different activities to check the knowledge there's also a combination within uh, the uh, asynchronous sessions and synchronous sessions with some video conferences with activities in small and large groups simulating what we are using uh, usually in our face-to-face -face courses all the group activities that we usually do are replaced by this video conference where all people can share their knowledge, their reflections, and practice some of the contents or activities in a synchronous session at the same moment. Sorry. To register to these courses as training provider, you have to visit the, the online training hub at ISO website. You know the, the the link already that's shown uh, Jack previously. And you have to click on instructor-led courses to check what are the courses that are available. You know that as a training provider, you can organize a closed course, which you have, for that, you have to share a private link to your uh, participants. So as when they follow the link, they are going to follow the instruction to register. So they have to click on the URL first the, that you have sent to the participants. They have to join ISOP or log in if they have already joined to ISOP. They have to create their password or log in to the training platform, which is healthyknowledge.org, and then to take the course. Also, you can, sorry, also you can um, organize open courses. For that, you have to list the link of the course and these courses will be open to anybody to register. So if there are going to be courses to uh, available to join, they just have to check the list on the online training hub and they have to click on the link to register on the course, join ISOP or login, create the password or login to the training platform, which is healthyknowledge.org, and finally to take the course as uh, Becky shown previously. Now we are going to show you uh, a deep um, overview of each of the courses. Uh, we are going to start with uh, uh, the UPC core, so you can understand a little bit, little bit more about the structure of the courses. So I'm going to leave you with Dr. Hein, who is going to show you the UPC core. Thank you.
Hello, everybody. Good morning. I hope you all can see my screen now. Um, so the, um, I'm going to show you very briefly a quick overview of the UPC uh, core. Uh, this was the first course we actually transformed and, and piloted. Um, as you can see, once you register and enter to the main uh, website of Healthy Knowledge, this will be the first view you have uh, of the course. For example, this is a Spanish version of the course where you will be able to see the first description of the course. And at the side, you can see um, there are several sections. These are the sections through uh, which ones you will progress as you go through the course. You will have a first landing page like this one. Then you will go to the next page where you will be given a short introduction on how to navigate this course, including a, a short video that shows you example of uh, on how the, the navigation is organized. Then you have a short introduction to our global community in, um, in substance use um, treatment and prevention and all the organizations that are involved. And after that, you start with your pre-evaluation or pre-assessment or our pre-tests. If, uh, if any one of you has ever taken um, any other courses of the UC series, you know that we always start with this pre-assessment. And then you start with the actual course, progressing through the different activities. Uh, that and at the end of the course, you need to complete a post-evaluation. And um, th this course is meant for, uh, for uh, skills training. So we actually work with you on a final project uh, to do like a first draft um, and draft project of an implementation of an evidence-based uh, uh, prevention to an actual context. Um, and to do so, you can draw on your experience or your actual working environment. So the idea of this course is to work through the, the key theoretical and conceptual um, concepts related to prevention science. And then we work with you, or uh, the trainer works with you in, in developing a first draft and how you should proceed to implement a specific intervention to your work context. So the course um, is composed of 20 sections. Uh, these include self-guided lessons. So you work through activities, materials, instructional videos. You uh, work on certain tasks and assignments, some are uh, reflection assignments. We ask you questions to think about, or we ask you specific um, uh, application exercises. Uh, for example, um, to conduct a small interview of someone that has, had, uh, has been using any psychoactive substance, for example, smoking or something. So we can put in practice some specific theoretical and practical uh, concepts. Uh, each time you finish a section or, or a particular part, you get the chance to self-evaluate. We have evaluation questionnaires um, uh, that help you to, to assess how you're going. And you need to uh, get, for example, uh, these are 10 question uh, questionnaires. You need to get right seven to be able to go to the next se section and you can uh, answer them as many times as you want. This is to make sure that you actually have gotten the key issues of a section before uh, we give you access to the next section. You have access to download all the materials. You also have access to participate in forums with your key classmates. So um, the way we have been doing this, for example, we, we, um, we form groups of 20 to 30 persons um, and their group depending on how we um, register candidates. Um, and with these 20 or 30 persons that work within a particular group, we hope that you take all the opportunities you can to interact with each other and take, for example, and use the forums to ask questions and to comment on each other's experience and also to share your experience. Also, we have a few synchronous se uh, sessions for integration. Uh, in this case, we have three se uh, sessions. Uh, once every meaningful block of contents have, has been finalized, then we have this opportunity to meet with each other, to clarify questions, and to uh, work in a little bit more um, directed. Um, face-to-face -face way. 
these synchronous sessions happen through Zoom mostly or in or another um, video conference system, so you don't need to move from where you are. The whole course um, has a duration of seven weeks of self-guided uh, work and task assignment and some synchronous sessions. And at the end, you have about two weeks to complete um, the, um, the final course task, with it, which is the, the putting together a draft implementation project for a, a specific prevention uh, program in a specific context. So as you pro progress through the course, as I mentioned, you watch instructional videos, you, you read complementary materials, you participate in some reflection exercises. Mostly, um, uh, mostly we work through this in, in the forums and also the um, synchronous sessions. Uh, you will have the, uh, part, the opportunity to share this with your, uh, with your classmates. You will apply certain concepts and also you will work on answering questions. This is a sample screenshot, for example, of one instructional video. All our instructional videos are rolled by real uh, trainers. Um, and these are people you would actually need if you uh, go to any of, of our other face-to-face -face courses. Um, this self, uh, this instruction videos cover the key concepts and key issues. And after each video, we usually have uh, certain activities to apply, to reinforce, or to work through. This is a, a site where you have screenshots on certain, uh, for example, self-guided activities. You may have flip cards to test your knowledge on certain definitions, for example. You have drag the words exercises. You have other exercises where you need to drag, uh, for example, the name of a certain uh, area of the brain. So you test your knowledge on how much you have learned uh, so far. And um, you also have, uh, have uh, many other instructional videos. In this course, you have uh, 35 instructional videos covering several hours of content of the course. You, <clears throat> regarding the materials, you will be working with, uh, you will be able to download the participant manual where all slides and key concepts and materials are contained. After the course, you can take it, actually, uh, you can take it with you to have it um, and to consult it. Um, also, if you are going to work with us as a trainer, we have a specific manual to guide trainers uh, regarding how to implement these courses in this new context uh, of online training. What kind of things, um, how do we assess this course? We have a multi-instrument um, assessment. So we will ask you about your course satisfaction. We ask you several questions as you progress through the course. Um, and how you are doing. And we have our pre-assessments and post-assessments. Um, <clears throat> after each module, as I mentioned, we uh, finalize a short quiz, uh, just to know that you have mastered the key concepts before you progress to the next section. Um, we have the uh, certain uh, places where we ask you for uh, your experience, how your experience through the course is going so far, so we can uh, assist you as soon as possible if you're experiencing any problem here. You will uh, work on seven intermediate assessments. They get a formative uh, assessment. So we'll ask you to turn in seven assignments that get assessed by your trainer and we'll provide you with specific feedback so you can um, test your skills on certain specific things. For example, uh, we work on, we give you an assignment of uh, looking actual evidence-based programs, where to look for, and to prepare a brief report of what you have experienced so far. Um, we ask you to interview some people and there are very hands-on exercises uh, that are things you need actually to do if you're going to work on developing an implementation project. And then there's our final project. I explained you uh, the whole course prepares you for this implementation project. Um, at the end, you will have uh, you have one um, one opportunity to, to turn in the project to get, get formative assessment. You will have the assistance through the whole course to prepare your project and, and to improve it, and then you have a final um, <clears throat> a final turning of the project to complete the course. We don't expect you at this course to produce a perfect uh, kind of uh, final project, but uh, at least that you uh, you are able to 
finalize the course with a clear structure on how you should proceed to and what kind of things you need to think about when you're trying to implement an evidence-based um, <clears throat> prevention strategy in your work environment or in your specific community. Uh, so for each assignment and for the final project, we have uh, explicit rubrics so you can actually access uh, the specific criteria. You get to see the rubrics um, on how we assess and give feedback to you. You can take away this rubric with you when you finalize the course and it will help you. We expect in the future, whenever you're uh, writing your own projects in the future, to assess if you are hitting all the um, or you're thinking on all the specific things you need to think through when you implement a, a project in your community. <clears throat> we monitor your progress and engagement. This is the way the trainers see how you're progressing through the specific activities. All the green boxes, the green circles are activities that have been completed. We also monitor if you're getting behind or delayed and we usually are very proactive in trying to engage you and to write to you to see if you have had any problems we can assist you with because our intention is once you start the course you hopefully can finalize it and and do and and and, and, and complete your process <clears throat> you will be interacting as a participant from a participant point of view how we organize these courses so we have a course administrator that will probably work with you in all the parts that are related to your passwords and how to enter the course and that kind of stuff. Uh, we Within the course, we have a help desk. So if you get stuck uh, for technical reasons or any other problems, you can stream the videos or whatever. We have a help desk you can write to, to, to solve your specific problems. And then your main interaction besides the self guided parts of the course, you will have a specific trainer that is assigned to you whom you can write uh, either in forums or through email or through a specific messaging system where you can um, uh, where you can ask questions, clarify um, your, your, uh, your questions, ask for supplementary materials and any other thing you need that is course related. So the trainer, its key function is to keep you engaged, is to ensure that you, once you start, you can actually that you are actually able to finalize the course. They will track your weekly progress. They will respond uh, to your questions. They will track the forums. Um, <clears throat> they will provide guidance to you. They will give you feedback on your assignments and turn-ins. And, and you will have the chance to meet them face-to-face, -face, well, virtually face-to-face -face in Zoom meetings or other sessions. Um, in the synchronic sessions where you can engage with other participants and the trainer and share and bring in your experience with it, within this course, share it and also um, um, ask questions and clarify whatever you need to be clarified. So this is what I can tell you about this course example. Right. Uh, thank you to our panel of um, presenters, Jack, Jack, Becky, Joel, and Dr. Andreas, for sharing your insights on and experiences with online courses. Of noteworthy mention is the fact that um, we had 95 attendees who registered for this webinar today. Congratulations. Thank you. We appreciate uh, the generosity and investment of your time and commitment with this new learning experience. Um, I have checked the questions um, in, the quest in the question pane. And uh, thank you so much um, for the kind words um, expressed. Uh, we are very um, thankful and um, we hope uh, we can be of further assistance uh, to Prof. Dr. Kamal in the future. And um, I think there is one question that I would like um, uh, Becky to address. Um, one person, Abdul Kadir, actually asked how to avail of the uh, UTC uh, courses one to eight. I would like to presume that um, he is like asking for both in-person as well as online, but I'm not sure because it's not stated there. 
uh, but let's assume it's uh, for both cases. So perhaps um, um, Becky would like to address um, Abdul Qadir's uh, concern. Over to you, Becky. Uh, thanks, Joe. I guess uh, that's a little bit of my question too. Um, all, all of the participant manuals are available on the ISAB website for one through eight. Um, as Jack showed you how to get there, all of those are there. Currently on the self-led, uh, we have one, two, six, seven, and eight. Um, three will be going up very soon. Four will come up after that. And we hope five will be there by the end of the year. So we are close to having all of one through eight um, available in the self-led, if perhaps that's what the question was. Don't hesitate to clarify if I haven't answered it uh, in the uh, question box so that I can easily come back and clarify something. Thank you, um, Becky. Um... There is another question from Dr. Muhammad um, Amjad. He is asking, how can we get advanced courses through HEK, self-led or instructor-led? Um, perhaps um, Becky can answer for self-led and um, either Joe and uh, Dr. Andres can answer for the instructor-led. Um, we do have the advanced courses on the list. Uh, like so many things, it's a matter of identifying funding, but we have, uh, we're working on the outlines and we are hopeful uh, that we'll identify some funding um, in the relatively near future to be able to get the advanced courses up too. Uh, we see a big demand for that. Many people who did in-person training for one through eight are very much uh, wanting to do advanced courses and it's difficult to schedule those in person. So um, from my perspective, uh, we wanna get them up as quickly as possible because we know the demand is there uh, and we are continuing to look for funding to do those just as quickly as we can. Thank you, Becky. Uh, would, um... Joe or Dr. Andres like to uh, address the um, question about instructor-led? Yes, which thank you. Uh, yeah, regarding the instructor-led courses for the advanced UTC, we have uh, we don't have right now um, the uh, plan to compare those courses. Probably we can prepare a hybrid version of the courses that will uh, Becky will transform into online for the uh, uh, self-led courses. Uh, so maybe we are going to convert those courses into a hybrid version instead of doing an instructor-led courses of those courses. So but we don't have it right now in, in our planning, but we have WISE as instructor-led that is a specialized course of the UTC series. So we have those courses, SOGI and WISE that are specialized courses not the UTC advanced, but yes, the, um, the specialized courses, SOGI and WISE. WISE is for women and SOGI for uh, gender diversity. Thank you. All right, thank you uh, to Joe. Um, Dr. Andres, would you like to address uh, for the Spanish uh, speaking instructor-led courses? <clears throat> yeah, sure. So, um... At the moment, um, we are finalizing the, so we have the, on the practitioner series, we have the, the core course is ready. Uh, so we're actually working with it right now. We're rolling it out. Um, so once we have set dates, you can register for it. And um, we are finalizing now the Spanish versions of the um, UPC practitioners and school family and monitoring and evaluation. So we are ready to, um very soon to start piloting it so if you are interested in participating in this pilot you can write uh, to us or to contact me particularly and uh, soon after that we'll have ready the english versions too uh, of these courses uh, at the moment so uh, to to work on the cycle usually to, to get to the um, 
to to uh, take the school one you need to go through the core course first uh, that's the way we're organizing that here thank you dr andres for this additional information uh there is a question from i think it's jun jun uh, he's asking um are global trainers at liberty to use the ISAP material to train or only official training providers can echo train well um per our sops if uh, your organization is registered as our training provider uh, which means you're also registered uh, you're also a registered isap member uh, and you if you have the um uh, qualified trainers to train on that particular course then uh, you can um, make a training request and then uh, register your participants for the course i hope it answers your question jun jun Right, moving on, there's another question uh, from Ezra. What is the role of the training provider once the instructor-led course has started? Ah, that's a good, good that's a good question. Well, um, let me um, try and answer this question. Well, um, if you're a training provider and you have the um, trainers to conduct an online training, um especially an instructor that course and uh, you have made a training request and you have registered your participants then your role will be to coordinate to monitor uh the progress of the course and also to um, evaluate the course um and also submit uh, uh the training reports um Yes. Uh, any others? Uh, any other questions? Okay, let me see. There's another one. Uh, please tell me how to assess instructor-led course. This is from Munawar Ahmad from um, Itramic Foundation. Uh, Joel, would you like to uh, address this question? Yes, sure. Uh, well, there, there's as um, Andreas mentioned before, there are several. Um, instruments to evaluate the courses and uh, we have the, the the typical pre and post test that we usually uh, apply during our face-to-face -face courses so we are going to apply exactly the same test pre and post test through the course there are several quizzes to uh, evaluate the progress of the students so and they can evaluate themselves as well in some um, automatic responses uh, quizzes and at the end of the uh, uh, of this course, they can do the overall evaluation survey uh, to evaluate the whole course as trainers, as the, the, the platform and the materials. So we are using exactly the same tools that we are using for face-to-face -face courses, but we have moved them to the online experience. Uh, and in thank the you. case of the, sorry, and in the case of the UPC courses, all of them finish with a final uh, uh, exam or, or, or work. Uh, some, uh, most of them are uh, implementation plans that they have to develop through the course. And that should be the, the last and final evaluation for the participants. This um, uh, implementation plan, and in the case of the courses of uh, uh, treatment, uh, they also have a final work that they have to present at the end. Right. Thank, Thank you, Joe, for this. Uh, but more specifically, uh, Munawar Ahmad is asking how to access the instructor-led courses, how to avail of these instructor-led courses. Joe, would you like to take the question? Yes. Sorry, I, I confused the question. Yes, uh, in, in the... A online training hub on ISOP website, you are going to go uh, and you will see two links uh, that they are very um, um, easy to identify. One of them says instructor-led courses and the other one says self-led courses. You have to click on instructor-led courses and you're going to see the list of the courses that are available right now. Uh, and when you are, uh, are going to to, to offer one of these courses, you have to ask ISOP to um, give you access to these courses. 
So, but the, the ones that are available, you can see them on the same training hub, uh, but you have to ask uh, ISOP, as Jack uh, showed before, uh, to uh, give you access to these courses. So it's ISOP, the, 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 the place where you have to ask for the, the access to the courses. Right, thank you, uh, Joe. Um, I have this question from uh, Malonda. Um, the question is, um, as training providers, <clears throat> do we first register for the course and the trainer as well as the participants? <clears throat> yes, I would like to think so. <clears throat> you have to make a training request and then um, if it's approved, then uh, you are good to go. But um, for more detailed information, can you kindly visit the uh, ISAP's online uh, learning hub? And um, as Jack has also um, uh, explained earlier, uh, there is um, a section on how to make a training request. I hope this answers your question, Malonda. And uh, there's another question uh, from Catherine. What is the minimum number of participants when requesting for an instructor-led course? Joe, would you like to take that question? Yeah, we, we suggest to have a, a, a course from 20 to 30 participants, no more than that. The, the maximum number of a participant should be 30 to conduct a good uh, course, especially when you do the synchronous sessions, uh, you are going to do activities in group, in small groups. So if you have more than 30 people, it's difficult to uh, organize that uh, part of the, of the session. So. Uh, the minimum would be 20 and the maximum uh, as a top would be 30 participants for each course. Right, thank you, Joe. Uh, there's another question from Dr. Amjad again. He's asking, can we develop more trainers online? And um, uh, do they have to go through the TOT online as they are already ICAP 1 and ICAP 2 certified? Becky, would you like to take this question? Sorry, I'm a little bit confused uh, by the question. Do they have if they've if they're already certified in ICAP one and ICAP two? Is the question that they do they need to do something else in order to train online? Do they need to uh, go through a TOT online? Um, well, for the self led courses, certain. I mean, I think that's probably a question for Joe in terms of instructor led courses, because that's what the trainers will be doing. Am I missing something? Yeah, I'm not really very. Um... I think this is more a general question where Dr. Amjad is asking, how do we develop more trainers online? Um, yeah, so it could be like uh, maybe instructor-led, but uh, he's also uh, saying that he, they already have an ICAP 1 and 2 uh, credential. Uh, so this would be like more the UTC. Um, but um, currently, uh, in my in my understanding, we have not have the um, instructor-led um, UTC courses online yet. We only have the self-led. So perhaps, um, uh, Dr. Amjad, you would like to like um, clarify this with me um, through an email offline. Right. There is another um, question here that is in French. I. I will take this uh, from um, uh, Mr. Joseph Gason um, offline. Right, any more questions? Let me let me check. Uh, the questions are coming in slowly but surely. Um, we have a question uh, from Mohammed Farid Basja from Afghanistan. Uh, he is asking, um, well, the certificates come from you, I think it's meaning Colombo plan, or the training provider will provide to the trainees. Uh, I assume that um, 
um, you are a training provider with the global plan. So we already have a um, training provider um, certificate of a completion template. So uh, I think you can, that, that, that certificate still applies. Uh, I hope uh, I've answered the question. Um, Malonda has asked an additional question. Can we, uh, do we submit reports only after the training is finished? Yeah, just like um, any of the in-person trainings so far, um, kindly uh, submit your training reports upon the completion of the online training. Another question here is um, from Carlos again. I need to put my data and my resume on the Healthy Knowledge Platform. How do you keep them confidential? Uh -huh. So um, this is just for registration uh, purposes for the course. And um, if it is not, and it's not for public domain. So um, it will be actually for the uh, purpose of um, healthy knowledge for record keeping. Right, another question is, in order, uh, this is from Ezra again, in order to give effective support to our participants, can you arrange a compulsory walkthrough of each course before we coordinate that particular course piece? Right, in fact, um, I was just going to touch on this in our uh, next steps moving forward. Uh, we will, uh, we plan to actually schedule uh, meetings with our training providers. Um, so this can be possible and um, we can actually arrange this upon request. I hope this answers your question. Um, Catherine, Dr. Catherine has a question. Are they free courses or are they paid for? Uh, I, I'm not sure if uh, Dr. Catherine, you have already um, visited the uh, ISEPS online learning hub. There is a minimum fee of um, 700 US uh, dollars where the requester uh, will have to uh, cover the expenses of creating the, an instance of the course, uh, the student uh, fees, as well as um, HEK admin costs. So um, they, they have to be paid for. These are some of the expenses um, uh, that uh, the training provider who is uh, offering the course will need to cover. Um, let's see. Um, another question from Catherine uh, Mutiani. Upon acceptance of an instructor-led course, who facilitates the synchronous session? ISEP or Colombo Plan identified trainers or the education provider uses their qualified trainers? Well, if the request is made by you, the training provider, I would like to think that um, um, the instructor and the course coordinator whom you have contracted to conduct the instructor-led uh, course uh, would be the one to facilitate the synchronous sessions. I hope this answers your question. Um, right, we have a question here. This is very interesting. From your personal experience as trainers, is it better for a trainer to undergo self-led courses or instructor-led courses? Well, um, since we had input from by our esteemed panel, perhaps um, Becky would like to tell us some of the um, benefits or advantages of um, an of a self-led course, and maybe uh, Joe and uh, Dr. Andreas can uh, tell us what are the benefits of um, undergoing an instructor-led course. Are Are we talking about the benefits for the uh, but the trainer, I'm not sure um, 
what is meant by the trainer here, but this is how the question was framed. Is it better for a trainer to undergo self-led courses or instructor-led courses? This is from Jayoba from Nigeria. Um, okay, so all, all trainers have to be trained in basic, if they're going to be training the UTC, they have to be trained in the basic one through eight, and then they have to sit for the exam. If they are working in the field, they can go ahead and also get a credential, but to be a trainer, they could be just an excellent trainer and not working in the field. And then all they have to do is pass the exam in order to be a trainer. Um, at this point, it would be their choice as to whether to do the self-led course or an instructor-led course, except that we don't have one through eight available online yet in instructor led and we don't have all of them available in self led but it it really is a personal choice if you want to once we do have this uh instructor led courses if you would rather have that more structured um process of going through the course under a timeline then that would be your preference. If you would rather have the flexibility of going through a self-led course in order to get one through eight, then I would recommend you do it that way. That's one of the beauties of, of all of this is we are trying to meet people where they are so that they can get the training they need. And as I said earlier, in many ways, it's just a matter of, as we can identify funding, we will get it up there as quickly as possible. But as far as just choosing between self-led and instructor-led, when you have the choice, I think it really is a personal choice and a learning style choice that individuals can make for themselves. Thank you, Becky. Uh, anything to add, Joe? No, I think that Becky have uh, answered the question. Uh, the other thing is that we don't have UTC basic in both uh, uh, versions. So uh, we don't have the, the, the series in the both me me methodologies. So uh, it, it's difficult to answer this question because we don't have the option right now. So uh, if, if it would be the case, uh, it, it would be an option, as, as Becky said, an option of uh, the trainer uh, and depending on the how 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 much they need to reinforce the 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 contents, maybe if they would be both versions available, it would be good to start with the self-led course in order to go deep into the contents and reinforce the, the, the their knowledge before to go to the instructor-led course. But we don't have both versions at the at the moment. That would be the only thing that I could add. Right. Thank you, Joe. I have a question from Joseph Gason again. He's asking, does my certificate of completion of the UPC5 MNS permit me to be a training provider? Um, can I request that um, you check the um, criteria for being a training provider on the ISAP website, and then um, you would be good to go. But uh, for now, the certificate of completion um, does not permit you to be a training provider just like that. There are certain criteria that you need to fulfill um, to be a training provider and uh, please check out the uh, criteria and then um, if you need further information, you can also um, write to uh, us. Um, we have put our uh, emails in the chat box uh, for further information. Um, let me check. Some more. There seems to be a number of questions still. Um, right. Uh, this question, I think um, I would like uh, Becky to address it. Temi uh, Tayo Mohammed says, I completed courses one to eight of the UTC about two years ago. Can I go ahead and write the ICAT exam? Right, Becky? Uh Yes, if you've done your training in the last five years, um, you can go ahead and go through the process of applying. You need to have the appropriate 
uh, clinical experience in addition to the training and the appropriate um, education level. But if you go to our website, globalccc.org, and uh, click on the online portal, you can uh, go right into the application there. But yes, training two years ago is valid um, if that's what you're asking. Right, thank you, uh, Becky. Right, I think um, we're almost done with the questions. If I have missed some of your questions, um, can you kindly submit um, these questions directly uh, to me and then I can forward it uh, to our panel of uh, presenters. Well, in the interest of time, um, I think we will need to like uh, close this webinar. But before that, uh, let me um, record a word of thanks to our panel of presenters again. And, um, and also to you, um, training providers from Asia, and also I noticed from other um, countries uh, in the world, thank you um, for your questions. And um, we hope uh, we have managed to address some of your concerns. Um, as I said again, and to reiterate, should you have any other questions, um, you can contact us uh, directly. And also to uh, reiterate another point I uh, put forward just now or I shared, moving forward, we are planning to meet with you on a scheduled basis uh, where we can further strengthen our training providers networking, as well as our training experiences for both the self-led as well as the instructor-led online courses. And uh, we will certainly keep you posted on this. One important and final announcement for everyone, 24 hours after you leave today's webinar, you will receive an email from GoToWebinar with a link to an evaluation form, your certificate of participation, and the webinar session recording. In conclusion, on behalf of ISAP, Colombo Plan, and CCAD, and our presenters, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of the day. Thank you. See you again on another platform. All the best to everyone.